Hey guys, my name is Scobie and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to play PSP games on your iPhone or iPad. This is going to be a nice, quick and easy tutorial. I'm going to be showing you step by step how to do everything. Let's jump right into this. So the first thing we want to do is open up our app store. And once our app store is open, we're going to be searching for PPSSPP. And this is going to be our PSP emulator that we're going to be using in today's video. It is 100% free, so the first thing you want to do is get this installed. This may take a couple seconds. Once it's installed, we're going to be opening it up for the first time to make sure that it opens correctly. And when we open it up, we'll be brought to this screen. So now that our emulator is installed, we're going to be talking about files, games, and BIOS files. So thankfully with PSP emulators, we don't actually need BIOS files, so that one we can already check off our list. That is not required. However, one thing I would recommend doing is setting up a bit of a file structure to actually hold and store our games. To do this, we're going to be opening up the Files app on our iPhone. You can also click Search and Search for Files. We're going to be clicking the Files app to open up the Files Explorer on our iPhone. From this point, I'd recommend clicking the Back button on the top left all the way until you get to this Browse Overview section here. We're then going to be clicking the On My iPhone option here. From here, I would then recommend going inside your PPSSPP folder. And then what I recommend doing is creating a new folder here to store your games directly. To do this, we need to click the three dots menu or the context menu on the top right. We're going to be clicking new folder. And here you can give the folder whatever name you want. I'm just going to be naming it games. Once this is done, we will now have an empty games folder in our PPSSPP folder. From this point, I will also mention I will not be showing you in today's video where to download or where to source your games. These you will need to source yourself online or by dumping and ripping your old games, whatever method you want to take. A simple Google search will help you out with this, but I will not be sharing any links in today's video. The file types you will be looking for for the games are important, however. You will either be looking for a .iso format file or a .cso format file. These are both disk image files that will be usable on the PSP emulator. All the game files I have are in a .iso format, so that's what I'm going to be using in today's video, but .cso files will also work. So here I've currently added my game Daxter in a .iso format into this folder, and you can see I have that at the moment. Once you have your games downloaded and put inside a folder that you can locate to easily, we're then going to be going back to PPSSPP, and we're going to be continuing from here. So what we're going to be opening up is the games tab here, the second tab on our PSP emulator. What we're going to be doing is changing to the list view. We're then going to be clicking the up arrow, which is going to bring us up to the root folder. And here we will then be brought inside our PPSSPP folder. From this point, we're then going to be clicking on the games folder that we have added here. And here we will then see a list of all of the games that you currently have added here in the correct format. So as you can see, Daxter shows up here as expected. From this point, all we need to do is tap the game and our game will actually load and work immediately. From this point, we'll have access to all of our on-screen controls for the emulator and everything will work as expected. So from this point, I'm actually gonna close down my game. We're gonna go back out to the PSP emulator itself and we're gonna look at some of the basic settings that I'd recommend taking a look at. To do this, we can click on the up arrow in the top middle of our screen. And then on the bottom right here, we'll have the option exit to menu. If we click this, we'll be brought out to the PPSSPP home screen. Once we're back here, we're going to be clicking settings on the right, and we're going to be looking at a couple settings. I don't think you need to touch most settings in this case, as it's set up pretty well from the beginning. However, there's a couple of key settings I think you can experiment with. We're mostly going to be looking here at the graphics tab. And one of the first things we're going to be taking a look at is the rendering resolution. Now, by default, your rendering resolution will be set to the 2x. However, here you can feel free to experiment a bit depending on the game you're playing. I'll also be showing you a bit later how to set up in-game profiles, so you can actually set up specific settings for specific games. But by default, I think a 2X can work. Depending on the version of the iPhone you have, or if you have an iPad Pro with an M1 chip, you can go a little bit higher or lower depending on what you're using. In today's video, I'm using the iPhone 16, so that will be a frame of reference for what you can do. But you can definitely go up to 4X depending on the game you're playing. However, I still think 2X is a good starting point. For the backend renderer, by default, it will be set to Vulkan, depending on the iPhone version that you're using. Here, you can easily switch between OpenGL and Vulkan. Feel free to experiment a bit here to see what gives the best results. For today's video, I'm going to be sticking with OpenGL, but this can depend a bit on what gives you the best results. If you are having issues running certain games, another option to set up is frame skipping, which will give you a bit more flexibility when it comes to performance. However, with my testing, I actually didn't find this was necessary. I was having more graphical glitches than actual frame rate issues. The frame rate seemed to be fine. So frame skipping, I kept off, but you can enable this to help if you are noticing some stuttering, depending on the game that you're playing. 
And one of the last things I'd recommend doing, which I kind of do by default on all the games I play now, is showing the FPS counter. This is here in the bottom section. And this is good when you're troubleshooting or playing with your settings. So you can see the exact performance hit or gain you get, depending on what you do. So this is something I definitely recommend at least having in the beginning until you have your settings dialed in. With all this in place, I'm gonna be going back to the main menu. I'm gonna be opening up our game again. And now we're gonna be talking a little bit about in-game profiles or in-game settings. So to access these, we're gonna be clicking on the up arrow on the top middle of our game. We're gonna be looking for the option on the right called create game config. When we do this, we will be creating a specific game configuration settings for the actual game that we're running. So this means anything we change in this menu will only affect the game that we're actually playing and the settings for that game profile. So this will allow you to set up a higher rendering resolution for a specific game. For example, Daxter, I could set this to four or even a higher X amount if I wanted, and it will only affect that game. So it means if you're having issues with certain games, you can change the settings, which is a really, really nice option of PPSSPP. And of course you can access and change these at any time. Once a config is created, you can delete the config on the right hand side in the menu as well. So you always have access to that also. From this point, I'll be showing you quickly how to connect an Xbox series controller to your PSP emulator, just to show how easily that works. In my opinion, it will improve your experience a lot. The on-screen touch controls are serviceable. However, with how easy it is to connect an Xbox controller wirelessly to your phone, I definitely think it's the recommended way to play. Even though you can only use one analog stick when using PSP, I think the options it gives you when emulating just gives so much more flexibility that I definitely recommend doing it either way. So the first thing we want to do is grab our Xbox controller. We're going to be turning it on and we're going to be putting it in pairing mode by using this button here on the top left and pressing and holding it until you get a rapid flashing on your Xbox controller. Once this is done, it's currently in pairing mode. From here, we're gonna be opening up the control panel on our iPhone. We're then gonna be looking for our Bluetooth module here. We're gonna press and hold this option. We're gonna be clicking on the Bluetooth settings. And here, we're gonna wait for this to open. We're then gonna be looking for the other devices option here. We're gonna be clicking on our Xbox controller that should appear. It will then take a couple of seconds. We'll eventually see this pop up here to pair. We're gonna be clicking the pair option. And then we're gonna to have to wait a few more seconds and our controller should connect to our iPhone. We'll know it's successful if it stops flashing and we see a full solid controller here. Now I'm gonna be opening up a PSP emulator to test this out, but feel free to test it in any game or application that you would like. But here we can see that I can currently move around directly. All my buttons will work. Anyway guys, it's as easy as that to set up and play PSP games on your iPhone or iPad. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like. Subscribe if you're new, check out the other videos on the channel. Until next time guys, as always, keep it saucy. Peace.